Since being selected with the 135th pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, Dak Prescott has been the heart and soul of the Cowboys organization. He's been a stabilizing component at quarterback with a franchise that's often embroiled in drama. He's played hurt, he's taken the high road on his contract status many times, and he's vowed to return a better player after a season-ending injury in Week 5 of this past season. Uh, another chapter in the book. Uh, I'm excited to move forward and write it. Um, just once again, can't thank you all enough for, for your love and your support through it all. Many were taken aback that Jerry Jones didn't reward his seemingly franchise player with a new contract after the 2019 season when Prescott put up career numbers. He was given the franchise tag then, but is now finally being rewarded with a deal on par with the other top-tier quarterbacks in the league. Will bygones be bygones now that Prescott has secured his long-term deal in Dallas? Or will there be potential mistrust lingering between the player and the organization? Only time will tell. Ah, uh, yes. It's good to be the king. It's also good to be an NFL quarterback. Look at this. Patrick Mahomes, 45 million. Super Bowl. Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson, 35 million. Super Bowl. Dak, one playoff win to Sean Watson. He hadn't been to Super Bowl either. So, wonder how the expectations change now that you're on this list. Sean Watson wants out of Houston. Dak now in with Dallas, just signing a four-year, $160 million deal to stay with the star on the side of his helmet. All right, Patrick Walker is our Cowboy Insider, knows this team, covers this team. Thrilled to have him on on this day. What is your reaction to this deal? Four years, buck 60 mil for Dak Prescott. He is now in the fold for the next four years. My reaction is one word, finally. This is something the Cowboys and Dak Prescott have been working towards for the greater part of three consecutive off seasons now. And now they get it done just ahead of what we believe is still going to be the NFL franchise tag deadline of March 9th. Now the talks began, uh, or I should say reignited in late February once the Cowboys got a little bit of insight and clarity on what the floor would be for the NFL salary cap moving from 175 to $180 million. And that prompted them to give Todd France, Prescott's representation a call to try to get things going again. Initially, there was nothing imminent, a uh, little bit of a slow broil, uh, but I'm told over the past couple of days, things had not only progressed, but they were progressing rather quickly. Now, as of Sunday evening, I was told that there were uh, no imminent uh, talks as far as agreeing to terms, but this afternoon, things picked up quite a bit. I am told by sources that Dak Prescott was able to get a little bit more involved in the conversation over the past 24 hours to try to move it forward. And I'm also told that Jerry Jones also put at least one hand on the wheel, which is something that did not occur in the previous two attempts to sign Dak Prescott to a long-term deal. So you're basically now looking at a deal that got done because four parties got involved. Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, Todd France, and Dak Prescott, all with one goal in mind, and that was to finally put this to bed and they did it four years on a historic Cowboys NFL contract which is going to put a lot of rumors to bed especially when you're talking about those who wanted to see Russell Wilson potentially in a Cowboys uniform what is the concern about his health if any on the Cowboys side do they feel like all right week one in September when you know we clap the huddle and, and jog it out week one he's going to be there is there any concern about this injury and how long it may linger I'm told there is no concern whatsoever. Uh, September is fantastic. You know, it's better than September, April. And they predict that Dak Prescott will be 100% ready uh, to report to April offseason conditioning, assuming it begins on time with no NFL calendar delays. The second procedure that was done on his ankle, I'm told, was completely voluntary, and it was done to strengthen the ankle, do a little bit of cleanup work from previous injuries that had occurred that he didn't need surgery for. So the broken ankle in October ended up being a kind of a blessing in disguise because it allowed doctors to go in. And when I say doctors, I'm talking about the Cowboys physicians and their team to go in and see what other opportunities Prescott had to make that ankle stronger. And this is why owner Jerry Jones consistently has said that Dak Prescott will be quote unquote better than ever. And the reason is because of that second surgery. So he was already ahead of schedule. Now he's much more so and he's aimed directly at starting in April for the offseason and conditioning program. What are the ripple effects 
minutes for this deal, uh, nothing gets signed in a vacuum. So now that you've just decided to pay your quarterback $40 million a year, could be 41 depending upon, what now? Who else is this affecting this roster? Well, the good news for the Cowboys is this is going to help them out, believe it or not, when it comes to the cap crunch. They were going to have to pull some triggers in order to get uh, a second franchise tag squeezed under the NFL compliance for cap room at $37.7 million. They were potentially in discussions, or I should say they were in discussions to potentially restructure deals on Ezekiel Elliott, Demarcus Lawrence, Jalen Smith, and several others, potentially Lyle Collins. Now they may not have to go that far to the left to get uh, under the cap. Now, keep in mind, they also also rolled over about 25, 25 and a half million dollars in cap space from 2020, something rolled away on purpose for this deal. Now they get to go forward feeling confident. They have their franchise quarterback. It's going to now allow them, maybe they restructure Lawrence anyway, but they don't have to go full to the wall and restructure four or five guys in order to be players in free agency. So it's good all across the board for the Cowboys. Hey, uh, part of it is kicking the can down the road. That's part of the art of managing the cap. And you're pointing out that, that this allows them to do that despite the fact that they're spending uh, more money. Lastly, what are now the expectations? What is the fan reaction going to be to this now? And a year from now, if Dallas is not, let's say, elite. I mean, this is a guy who's 1-10 in 10 the last two years against team with a winning record and has exactly one playoff win in his life. What, how does this change expectations and how the fans see him? Well, the expectations should not change at all. The expectations are Super Bowl uh, here in Dallas, and that's going to continue to be the case. Now, with the added money, obviously, that's going to bolster uh, that a little bit more, but it doesn't change the fact that the Cowboys and the Cowboys fans are looking for a return to glory, something they've not had since the mid-'90s, since... And to a lesser degree, Barry Switzer. But the Cowboys are going to have to use the cap space that they have in free agency and particularly going into the NFL draft to rebuild and revamp this historically bad defense. You're going, you bring in defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, former uh, coach of the Legion of Boom in Seattle. You bring over defensive backs coach Joe Witt. They have that uh, relationship from the Atlanta, their time with the Atlanta Falcons. And the Cowboys are now dead set on giving Dak Prescott a defense that that is at least average, middle of the road. If you can give uh, Dak Prescott a defense that's 16th or better in the league with the numbers that he's able to put up, the weaponry that he has on offense, and you have uh, offensive line players coming back healthy to Ron Smith, Lyle Collins, I'm told they're both ahead of schedule. They'll be ready in April. Zach Martin, he'll be ready in April. The Cowboys just need to give Dak Prescott a defense, something that, as we know, Tony Romo did not have, and that was one reason Tony Romo was not able to succeed in Dallas. But Jerry Jones hopefully has learned that lesson. You got your offense completely locked up, including Dak Prescott. Now the tables turn to the defense. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.